Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. My name is Victor Komunibo, and this is the Flat Out Podcast. If you are new here or you've watched some of our videos and you did not subscribe, our banner, Koda, Koda, <laughs> just click the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you can get updates when new content is uploaded. You can also follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We are live everywhere. Our podcast is on multiple platforms. So no talk, say, you know, see, I'm Google it. It is flat out we could <laughs> I may have talked too much, but yeah, let's get into today's episode. Today, I have one of the Nigerian national team faithfuls. She represented Nigeria in the World Cup, won Afro basket twice. Why am I even talking so much? Some of you know, some don't. So this is like a formal introduction. Um, she's always about the basketball community, especially in Nigeria. Check out Twitter page, now, Nigerian, Nigerian. In fact, she says she's going to start speaking Igbo a lot more now. <laughs> Let me get our guest in. Sarah Ogoke, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show, ma'am. How's it been today so far? Pretty good. Pretty good. I can't complain. <laughs> we all can. With the pandemic and everything that has happened so far, man, it's been it's been a crazy year. Things are opening up now. So how do you feel about getting back to practice and being able to work out around people? Oh, uh, no, it's, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling because uh, to you, pandemic now like dang that's bringing back some crazy memories because last year was <laughs> last year was messed up but um you know we we got through we pushed through it like it kind of made with all the gyms being closed and mm -hmm. things like that kind of made you um think outside the box on how to still make sure you get your workout in you know yeah um, basketball, is a, basketball. In my opinion, basketball is a sport where you really, if you really, if you really want to get in shape, you really don't need a lot. True. You true. know, as far as you're willing to go outside and do what you have to do, like there's almost no excuses. Yeah. Um, but that's what I learned. That's what I learned. It was hard at first, but eventually you get to the point where it's like, okay, like the world is burning all around me, but that's still <laughs> not going to stop me from doing what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. That's, that's kind of how that's kind of how I took it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always on your live every now and then. In fact, I think you had one yesterday where you were, we had a pickup oh, or yeah? something. Yeah, I was watching. <laughs> anyway, um okay, so. you're you're studying medicine, yeah. I hear. And was it something that you always wanted to do? Or it was just you just felt like okay, let me get into this right now at this stage of my career. Um, that's a good question. Um, to be honest with you, before I even knew anything about basketball, like I always knew I was going to be a doctor one day. I always knew I was going to study medicine because I, I come from a family of medicine. Okay. I come of come I come from a family of healthcare. My mom is a nurse, nurse practitioner. Um, my father is a physician. He's an anesthesiologist. Um, my auntie is a nurse as well. So okay. we have a lot of healthcare. Several of my aunties are nurses, actually. So that's that's what I was born into. Um, so basketball developed as a hobby when I was younger, like around the age of 10, 11. And like the type of person that I am, I always just, I always just like to push myself to see how good I can, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been like, I've always been self-determined. So I just, what started as a hobby just turned into a deep passion and interest because I just kept getting better and better. I, I think that a lot of people say the same thing, like basketball started off as an hobby. Although some people from when they were really, really young, they pushed them so far to become basketball superstars. Not everyone gets to play on the national team like you. Not everyone yeah. gets to a pro level, but yeah. We all we all get we all love basketball to a certain level. Um, what are the struggles you face so far now that you're studying medicine and you're also playing pro? How difficult has it been for you to cope? Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say difficult. I'll definitely say challenging. Um, but it's definitely made me a better basketball player, like mm -hmm. by far. Medical school has definitely made me a, a much 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 better basketball because I've learned how to study the game. You know, my approach on basketball is different from when it was, from when I was, you know, when I was younger um, and when I was 
like actively playing like overseas. Yeah. You know, I didn't I didn't see the game the same way. And my passion now has actually increased like tenfold. Uh-huh. You know, compared to what it was before. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, I think it's just the fact that for me it helped things balance out. Being in medical school helped things <clears throat> balance out in terms of my in my game because I don't know. I just, I guess it just filled in a, a gap, a part of me that just gave me more to push like for basketball. You're more knowledgeable about different things, especially yeah, when exactly. it comes to sport. Yeah. yeah. I, feel, I understand. Um, college basketball is back. And this is match run, match madness. And a lot of teams are going at it already. I think Virginia won their game last night. Um, are you big on female college? It was like, the male guys are also big on it. Oh yeah, then, definitely, <laughs> definitely. You have to stay. You have to stay consistent with what's going on. <laughs> of course, you know those those kids are those just like those kids are watching. You have to be watching them. Yep, you understand because they're coming up too. But um, yeah, I like UConn. I really like Louisville. Uh, one of my national team teammates, um, Elizabeth, mm-hmm. plays by Logan. She plays yeah. um, for Louisville, so I really watch them a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely big on on college hoops. You gotta see, gotta know what's going on. Yeah, you also played college yourself. Uh, you yeah. were you went to Southern State Poly University, and can you talk to me about your time in the college? What was it like? Yeah, um, I started off at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I was in the Big East. We played against UConn. We um went to the Sweet Sixteen my freshman year. So I. Coming out of high school, I saw a lot of success um, in basketball at the Division One level very, 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 very early. And we had a really good team, and that taught me a lot. And um, I ended up transferring out um, due to, like, academic reasons. And I, okay. finished at, I finished at Southern Polytechnic State University, which is now Kennesaw State University. Yeah. And um, I feel like helping – I feel like me playing at all those different levels just – gave me more experience, you know, from low major to mid major to high major to, to okay. NAIA. I got to see a lot of variety of basketball, you know, so it really helped me out a lot. Um, on my last episode I was with, I spoke to Anomir, um, Akimbody James, she plays for Duke University. And she talked about adjusting to the pace of college hoops. And how difficult is, or what's the big difference from coming out from high school into the college game, what was the big difference for you? Yeah, definitely the pace. The pace of the, pace of the game is faster, you know. Um, but that's about it, in my opinion. You know, once you get adjusted to the pace of the game, and not just adjusted, but you can supersede that mm-hmm. to the point where the game is, is, is moving slowly all around you, then and you'll be fine. And your skills will come out, yeah. That's great. Um, you you actually are two-time NAI All-American. Um, you won Defensive Player of the Year in your time in college. And you also inducted into the Hall of Fame of Kenshaw State. But what was that feeling like being recognized at the eye tops like that? Like, to be honest with you, like, the type of person I am, um... I guess like world-class athletes, elite players were just so caught up in getting to the next level, get to the next level, get to the next level that sometimes you forget about what you've accomplished. <laughs> so when they called me and they told me that I was inducted into the Hall of Fame and that I need to come down um, to Atlanta to receive my award and give my speech, I was like, it was like, wow, okay. <laughs> so I actually, I've actually, I forgot, I've actually done something. Let me go, <laughs> let me go and receive this award. <laughs> This one that I'm pushing, 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 you know. So it was it was nice to go back and see everybody, get recognized, um, go to your alma mater. They show you a lot of love, they put you in hotels, they feed you, they fly you out, you know, they celebrate you. You walk on the football field, everybody claps mm-hmm. for you, you say hi. <laughs> so it was it was it was a good feeling, you know. It was a good feeling. I, it was a blessing for sure. Yeah. Um so far you've been you've been in the leagues, in different leagues. You've played pro basketball for a while now. And what has been the toughest person you've had to guard? Like, there's someone that you, you have to be 110 for the person every time you face them, from college down to the pro level. 
I haven't I haven't seen anybody that I can't guard that I haven't watched on film already. If I have an issue guarding them, it's probably it's only because I haven't taken the time to study them like I'm supposed to. Okay, so, I so can't say anybody. There's no one that you say, ah, oh, this person I have to be 110 every night. I know you 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 have a problem on your own. You get you like everybody has to be a 150 against you because you get buckets. But yeah, for others, yeah, no. like. No, I know what you're saying. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I would say some, I wouldn't say she was tough to guard, but I would say that during the game, while I was playing her, I had to like, there were moments in the game where I had to like, go like this to myself. Like, okay, this girl can play. <laughs> I couldn't even be upset that she scored on me because I was like, all right, that was, that was a nice move, but you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get her ass back. You know, that's for sure. But let me, let me commend her. And that would be Kelsey Mitchell. That'd be Kelsey okay. Mitchell. Mm. She she got she got drafted number two in the 2018 WNBA draft. Yeah. And I played again, I played against her in the African Champions Cup for women. Um last uh 2019. That they had in Cairo in the yeah. Yeah. I yeah. watched the final game. Yeah, and um you watched you saw that game, right? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um so you know what's up now, <laughs> but but when I played against her, I didn't even know who she was. It was just at the end of the game. I was like, "Damn, that girl was pretty good. That was a good because we we won. We beat them. Yeah, you, you understand. Did. We beat them. But I had to say to myself, "Hey, I have to talk to her. Like, hey, you're a pretty good player." That's when she was like, "Yeah, I play in the WNBA. I'm number two draft overall." I said, "You know what?" I shook her hand. I was like, "I'm gonna see you again." Um. You know, see you again. Um, cool. Before we go on, you touched on this a little while we started. Um, what's your routine like getting your body ready for a different season or tournament? Uh, even if it's just pickups, how do you get ready or prepared for practices and all that? Yeah, I mean, I can't give that out because, you know, <laughs> not on not on something that's going to be put so no, on YouTube. But I have my nothing ready. little, no little snippet that you're going to give, at least for the young girls that are trying to be like you. <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> maybe when I retire <laughs> like Kobe Kobe didn't give out his, his secrets until he retired so maybe that's just how I'll do that's my mentor so we just we just have to keep watching your that's workout it. tapes and all that for now I mean you know it's the normal stuff you know work out a lot you know lift weights train shoot <laughs> Same old, same old. Same stuff everybody else does, you know. But I try to play a lot. Right now, I'm, I'm playing a lot. I don't, I don't work out as much. I'm playing, I'm playing a lot. Right okay. Now. Um, in 2018, uh, you had a big game against Turkey. I think it was an opening game in the World Cup. You had 22 points, and you guys, you guys got to the sem- um, quarterfinals in that tournament. Um, what was it like playing under the, one of the biggest lights, if not? the Olympics. So I think Olympics is 1A and the World Cup is 1B in my own books. Uh, what was it like showing out on that kind of a platform? To like to be very honest with you, like for me, it was just a matter of time and just for me to get the opportunity because something like that doesn't happen as a fluke. You know, I yeah. already know that if I get on this floor and I if I get going that it's a wrap I'm going to lose. So it was just, a, you know, it was just, I was just happy that my teammates believed in me. I was happy that my coach believed in me. I was happy that the administration believed in me for me to get that opportunity to go out there and shine like a star, you know, that, that was it. And the year after that, we, you got into, you got, you played for Ferroviro de Maputo. We were just talking about this. Um, you stunned, you shunned everyone on that team. Uh, you had a big game, I would like to say you had a big game in the final. Uh, going against players like Kelsey Mitchell and um, I, what was her name Lucas of the Angolan side. Yeah, how do you how do you feel like you you get to the next level? You push yourselves in games like that. What is is this? Is there a secret to it? Is there something that just flips your switch and you say, okay, it is go time. Let me get to these guys right now. Man. Um... Shoot, I think it's just experience. I've just played in so many big games. I'm I'm 30 now, you know? <laughs> I've, I've just played in so 
so well i mean even thoroughs don't like me i understand but i don't know i just i guess i just have that killer instinct to be very honest with you that i just value opportunities a lot and i have a lot of confidence in myself and i have a lot of confidence and i feel like that radiates you know yeah. i feel like the confidence that i have in myself it radiates to my teammates Mm-hmm, you know, and mm-hmm. I think we were down. I think we were down like 13 points going into the fourth quarter yep. in that game. Yep. But I knew we weren't. I knew we weren't gonna. I knew we were gonna. I still knew we were gonna win because I knew that the way we were playing, if we just change the way we're playing, we'll win. <laughs> <laughs> so I commute. <laughs> let's just not play like this. We have time. So I just communicated that to my teammates. I was, I was like, Yo, this is the adjustment we have to make. And that I think that's what set us. I know that's what set us off. So yeah, it's just I feel like it's just experience, you know. Yeah, it was it was a great game because all the time I all I was watching, I was like, ah, these ladies are actually putting on a show. A lot of people don't like female hoops, and I don't know why, but I appreciate it because I think ladies are so much. They are way more fundamental than guys. A lot of guys just they they rely on the athleticism and do because everybody can jump out of the gym nowadays everybody wants to see that and not basketball in its in its rarest form yeah um, definitely now that now that game was good anybody that likes basketball should go back and watch that game <laughs> i think it was high scoring it was fast paced it was high percentage made a lot of made shots yep it was clutch baskets clutch defensive stops big threes in the fourth quarter <laughs> Dude, that game it was, was a tight really game. It was a tight game. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, 2017 versus Senegal, Afro Basket, you topped them. 20, 2019 versus Senegal, you topped them at home again. What was the most memorable moment in both Afro Baskets for you? <laughs> um, I won't lie. Like, you know, like they say, there's, there, there, there ain't nothing like the first time. That first championship that we won in 2017 was, it was sweet. And I, I feel like the, the shot that I hit, the shot that I hit, I think it was in like the third or fourth quarter, yeah. was 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 big as well because, you know, it gave my team a lot of, a lot of confidence. It, it encouraged my teammates a mm-hmm. lot, you know, and took us where we needed to go and helped us finish that game. So I feel like that was big and it helped us win our first Alpha Basket Championship in several years at least 10 or maybe 15 yeah you know and shout out to senegal i I respect them a lot their um national team has been consistent their program has been consistent for several years they always come out with good players and i me i always get up to play against senegal when i first came to the national team in 2011 i asked all the like the the older women i asked them like mind you i was i was just a kid i was 21 years old youngest player on the team at the time I asked all the players, like, hey, who do we have to beat? Because mind you, we were, we were trying in 2011, we we're trying to qualify for 2012 London. Yeah. So I asked my teammates, who are we trying to beat? Who's the who are the top dogs in this tournament that we're and everybody said Senegal, Senegal, <laughs> Senegal, Senegal. So from that moment in my head, like I was like, all right, I gotta whenever I see Senegal, I show out, <laughs> you know, for sure. Uh, in 2019, you beat them at home, but that that is right up there with the first time, I guess. No, definitely, that was uh, it. Was a very enjoyable team victory. Unfortunately for me, I had malaria, so oh. I really didn't do I didn't really do nothing in that tournament because I was really really sick. But it was an excellent. It was a very very sweet team victory. Beating them at home, they brought the entire country to the stadium. <laughs> it was by, loud. By loud as hell (laughs) by bus yeah they brought everybody it was so loud like even when we're pulling up to the stadium people were like mobbing our buses and stuff like that (laughs) already it was i don't the atmosphere was dope i like that type of atmosphere because even in 2017 we still had to beat the home team in the semifinals yeah we had to beat molly in the semifinals Mm -hmm. to go to the finals yeah and that was that might have been worse to be honest with you because they brought the vuvuzelas they brought the rule there. <laughs> was like, uh. So that was, and I think we nearly clinched that by like, like one point. But shoot, this all me personally, I yeah. enjoy beating the home team. Yeah. That, that one is sweet to me, Pass. Different oh, I, feeling. I swear. 
I swear that I like when everybody in the stadium is against me. I love that. I love that thing. And we still win. Yeah, everyone we goes quiet ballet. immediately. Once you, once the buzzer goes off and they lose, everywhere is just quiet. Dead ass quiet. They, they sweet me, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> now, you, now, you guys are preparing for the Olympics. Um, congrats to, to you guys qualifying for that. Everybody wanted the both teams, the male and female teams, to make it and you made that yeah. possible. Now, yeah. what would you say the dynamics of the 2017 and 2019 team are that you guys have to carry over to this Olympic team? That's a good question. Um, yeah. So I would say the, the initial dynamic of the 2017 team was a perfect blend of new people and veterans. Oh. You know, we just had a excellent dynamic. We came in there and we just, the chemistry wasn't lacking people came in and we knew what the objective was got it done 2017 we were more you know mature we had added a couple new pieces same thing got the job done this time around you know this time around our team is is even better you know we just keep finding ways to just continue to just get better and um you know we're 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 gonna come out we're gonna play hard that's one thing that you can guarantee from Nigeria is that we're going to play yeah, hard. Exactly. You know, it's going to be a dog fight. We're going to compete to the last second. And, you know, shoot. We end we should. We're going out there. We're not going out there for vacation. You know, we're looking <laughs> for a podium. No, nah, it's not a vacation. Yeah. We're not looking to go sightseeing. We're going there to, to, to really bring home a gold, a gold medal. You know, that's what, that's what our, our aim is. It's, and shoot, we expect to be standing on that podium by God's grace. That's what we're going for. Yeah, we trust you. We're backing you guys at 110%. Definitely watching every game on that one. Um, yeah. We're almost at the end of the interview. You talked about one one on one that you were looking to play. You always come to Nigeria. And you this time you said, you tweeted it out that people should watch out. You have one on ones against a lot of young guns in the country. Tell me, what is the objective behind these one on ones that you plan to play? What's the objective behind the one on one? Yes. To, to be honest with you, it's to get me better. Mm. No, not, not anybody else. You don't care about me. <laughs> it's for me. Uh, for me. me. I want to play everybody. Uh, I want I want everybody smoke. That's just it. That's just how I'm, that's just how I'm feeling. You know. You're about to light up some ice when you're back in like Jack. I hope I'll be there by yes, that. Yes, sir. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely. Um, the Nigerian basketball scene, I mean, it's, it's been messy of late, especially with uh, the league games that have not been, that have not been in schedule for like how many years now? Three years. And hopefully we, we think, we hope that things are going to change in year 2021. There's going to be an election in June. But what's your take on the whole issue? And what how would you what kind of change would you like to see, especially in the female basketball league in the country? Shoot. That league, there's so much there's so many players, and it just seems like not enough money right now. You know, first mm-hmm. and foremost, I would say is figure out a way to raise money. You know, but that also stems with the issue of the entire country. Yeah. You know, and how and how money's not really flowing like it's supposed to, anyways. But um, I know all that. There was a lot of politics going on with that stuff. It kind of got sure. crazy. Um, with the with the lawsuit and everything like that, which yeah. I feel like, which, which I think has been thrown out. So, um, I think that was really hindering a lot of the progress. That lawsuit, in my opinion. From in my opinion, was was mm-hmm. hindering like the progress of the league. So now that that's out of the way, even though it's stuff like that can, stuff like that can, even though you, you even though the opposition doesn't necessarily win, they still succeeded in wasting your time and your money. Yeah, you know, which yeah. is unfortunate. But I'm just hoping that, um, you know, the president of the federation, Kita, and everything, everybody, they can figure out a way to just get things back going in the way in the right direction because those kids deserve it. Those not even kids, grown adults. Damn, those, like it's crazy. Those, those, you know, people, people, people with families. They, 
they deserve much, much better. You know, they deserve to be treated like stars because they put in that effort and, and that's what basketball is. Like when you put in that type of effort to become, to groom your talent like that, mm-hmm. you should be held at a, at a certain regard and they, every, all the plays in Nigeria, they deserve it, you know? Yeah, so hopefully definitely. things get better. Definitely. A uh, couple more questions. Just a rapid fire question. What was your favorite local meal? Uh, Pando and Egusi. <laughs> it's crazy that you say that because that's actually my favorite. <laughs> hey, <F-I-5>. <laughs> five. <laughs> Everyone likes Pando and Yama Big. <laughs> um, five songs from your workout track list. Oh, um, How I Wish That You Were Mine by Philip George, um, Niniola Addicted, mm-hmm. um, Cabs Are This Small, um, I forget how to say the word, it's like, it's a song called Nyonga Differ or something like that, um, and like three more tracks off of his album, I like, I like South African house music a lot. Why? But um, I, hope, I hope you're not partial to them. Over Nigeria, big. I'm not partial at all, but I think how I think Ama Piano is cool right now. But I have mm. my Nigerian artists, but I I like Ama Piano. All right, last one. Favorite arena to play in, or where you want to really play? I want to play in the Barclays Center. Mm. I want to play in the Barclays New York Center. City. Yeah, yeah. So I'll see myself playing there. Soon enough. Soon Good enough. Question. <laughs> Good question. Good question. Good question. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Sarah. I really, really appreciate you for doing this, taking out time and just sitting with me and just gisting for a bit. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a, it's a pleasure. I appreciate you bringing me on to your show. Right. Thank you. And that's a wrap, people. Thank you for joining us. Um, you can see, you have seen the time management, nine the airports, the balance things out. So it is not just basketball and medicine, it's for everything in life. We hope that the Nigerian national team actually do well in the Olympics. We are rooting for them. If you are not rooting for them, you'll be enemy of progress. <laughs> Till next time, people, stay safe, stay frosty, flat out.